Let's go. Let's take a look at what we did in the first video. We set up the video lineup. Described the basic idea. Ordered the domain so no one would take it and put the PCB into production so it would arrive soon. In today's video, we'll go through the design of the 3D product model, design the PCB for the manufacturer, test the printed 3D model, put together the complete product and test it. Personally, I use the free version of Fusion 360 for parametric 3D modeling, but it's entirely up to you what tool you use. In the future I plan to create a tutorial for both the Fusion and Shapra 3D application, if we reach 1000 subscribers together. In the design I first created a ping pong ball as a dimension reference. Then I started to model the stand. I sped up the video since the modeling took about 30 minutes, which would have been a bit boring to watch. And here we have the finished 3D virtual prototype. I uploaded the model to the printer, and in about an hour and a half the print was finished. After removing the part from the printer, all I had to do was rough clean it and remove the supports. I decided to put them on the underside even though they would print better backwards, but I wanted a clean top for the ping pong ball. Now let's take a quick look at how to design your own PCB to give your product better quality than with loose wires. Personally, I like to use the EasyEda.com tool, which is free and will allow designs for simple or more complex components. There are many beginner tutorials on YouTube, but with a PCB this simple you can handle most of them intuitively. Later I will create a tutorial just for this application if you are interested. The important thing is to find the components you need from your supplier, then by name or datasheet search for these products or similar in the EasyEda database. If they are not there it is possible to create them, but this is more complicated, their database is large enough to find most of the standard components. You then connect these components to the schematic and have a PCB generated. Here you create the size and shape of the PCB, and then place and connect the components. You have the possibility to check your PCB in a 3D preview. I am still missing the holes for attaching the PCB to the product, I will finish these and save the GRBL file with all the data to my computer.
I create a new order on jlcpcb.com, select my project file and wait for it to upload. Once the file is uploaded, I set the parameters and click order. One week later. After some time, the package arrived. Let's see how the PCBs did. For better price and sales in the future, I ordered more of them at once. The PCBs are perfect. Let's put the electronics on them. Since this is not an SMD version, soldering is easy with just a regular soldering iron. The circuit itself is very simple to the point of actually being a school project in electrical engineering. Just a battery switch and a diode. Six points to solder and you're done. We'll clean the PCB after soldering and test that it's functional. And now the complete assembly of the lampstand. Just a quick check that everything fits as it should and we can screw it in. And this is what the lamp looks like fully assembled, later we can glue the balloon on, but for now we'll leave it like this because we'll need the balloon in the future. Not everything will work the first time, but that's the advantage of 3D printing and the possibility of testing and iterations. So now we have a finished prototype, but nothing interesting, so far we are missing the personalization part and the online involvement in the process about it in the next video. All the data for this project can be found on my Patreon at the link in the video description. Thanks for your attention and don't forget to click subscribe and like.